Welcome back everyone! Today we're going to discuss about inverse functions. What are inverse functions? Inverse functions are functions whose domain and range are switched. So how will this look like when you're given a function and you need to generate its inverse function? Let us begin. For our first example, we are given f of x equals negative 2x plus 3. For us to be able to switch the y and the x properly, we need to make sure that this is first replaced with the y so that we can clearly see that that is your range, that is your y, and then this is 2x plus 3. For us to get the inverse functions, we need to switch our domain and range. So the y turns to an x, and then the x turns to y. After that, your next step is to solve for y. When we're solving for y, that means that you're isolating your y. The negative 2 and the positive 3 must be removed. Between the negative 2 and the positive 3, the first thing that we can remove is the positive 3 by subtracting 3 on both sides. We're going to do this with a shortcut, and the shortcut is just move this to the other side, but you will change the sign. So therefore, the positive 3 becomes a negative 3, and this is just brought down. To isolate your y, we're going to divide both sides by a negative 2. That now is your inverse function. So that is y equals x minus 3 all over negative 2. Let's just fix this by putting the y on the left side. To do this properly, we need to change the y into the inverse function notation. So therefore, we're now going to have the f to the power of negative 1, x, and that is that means that it's your inverse function now. This time, I want to separate the slope and the y-intercept. So that would look like x over negative 2, which you know there's a 1 there, so the slope is actually negative 1 half. And negative over negative is a positive, so your y-intercept is positive 3 out of 2. There you go, guys. This one is now your inverse function for this given function. Let us now have example number 2. f of x equals negative 3 fourths x plus 5. So the same process, you're going to change your f of x into a y to clearly see that that is your y. You're going to copy down all your functions, and then you're going to switch your x and y. So the y turns to x, and then the x turns to y, and you will solve for y. Between negative 3 fourths and positive 5, positive 5 is the one that you can remove first by subtracting 5 on both sides. However, we're going to do the shortcut, which is put the 5 to the other side and it will change the sign. So the positive 5 becomes negative 5, and then the negative 3 fourths y is brought down. All right, now we're going to isolate the y. I'm going to do this slowly, although some of you may already know that for me to remove the negative 3 fourths, I will just have to multiply all these by negative 4 thirds, which is the inverse. However, I want, as I said, I want to do this slowly, so I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the, the positive 4 first at the bottom by multiplying both sides by 4. Whatever I do on the right, I do on the left. And this 4 will cancel out and turn into a 1. Therefore, this side right here, this side right here will just become a negative 3y. Alright, now I can remove the negative 3 by dividing both sides by negative 3. And now my y is isolated. And I'm just going to fix this to where y is written on the left side. And 
and then I'm going to finish this up by changing my y into the inverse function notation f to the power of negative 1x. This is negative 3. And this right here is the inverse for that function. Okay, our third example is f of x equals x squared minus 4. So once again, f of x will be changed into a y. Just for you to clearly see so that when you interchange, you know that the y turns to x and the x turns to y. And then solve for y. This negative 4 can be removed by adding 4 on both sides, but we're going to do the shortcut, which is just to move the negative 4 to the other side, but make sure you change the sign from negative 4 to a positive 4. And then y squared is brought down. For you to make this y squared become just a y, you will have to get the square root of y squared. Whatever you do on the right, you do on the left. So now, getting the square root of y squared will give us just a y, which is what you're looking for. And then on this side, make sure to write plus or minus square root of x plus 4. And that is your inverse. We're going to write this to where y is on the left side. And we're going to finish this up with the inverse function notation. And so this right here is the inverse of this function. Okay, go ahead everyone and flip your notebook to the next page because we are continuing our discussion on inverse functions, but this time, tables. How can we tell or how can we generate inverse functions of given points? It can be table, it can be just set of ordered pairs. How do we generate from this original given function from the table? How can we get its inverse function? So let us begin. All right, so this is our table right here, ready to be filled out. And what you're going to do, guys, is that all your domain will switch to becoming the range. And all the range will now become the domain. But make sure that you're pairing them up where domain turns to a range, such as the, and vice versa, such as this. My output right here, which is a 7, now becomes my input, okay? My input is 7, and now my output is negative 2. Okay? Input of 5 will yield an output of negative 1. Then 3 input, output 0. 1 input, output 1. Negative 1 input gives a positive 2 output. All right. So notice that what you did, the same pairing, but then you have switched them, and that is it. This is how you show inverse when you're given some set of points. All right, I'm so excited to show you this next and final part, which is how can we generate the inverse of graphs? And I want to use these two tables that we have here. And again, we're going to plot all these points as our original graph, and then we'll see how the inverse looks like. So let us begin. So I have a negative 2, 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's negative 2, 7. Okay. I have my negative 1, 5 right here. So negative 1, 5. And then I have 0, 3. Okay. And then I have 1, 1. And I have 2, negative 1. That's wonderful. Slopes are all perfectly done. All right. So these are my original points. And let us go ahead and plot our inverse points. So I have 7, negative 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 2. Okay. And then I have 
5, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1. And then I have 3, 0. Again, following the same slope. And then 1, 1, they are coinciding at this particular point. And then negative 1, 2. The red dots represent your original function, and then the blue points represent your inverse functions. So guys, as you can see here, I have connected the points of your function so that you can clearly see what's happening with your graph. So let us investigate and look at this. Uh, so these are, your, these are the coordinates of your points for the original graph. And then these are the coordinates of your points for the inverse of your function. So let us look at this. So negative 2, 7 is actually the inverse of that is 7, negative 2. And then this point, negative 1, 5, the inverse of that is 5, negative 1. Right here, 0, 3. The inverse of that is 3, 0. 1, 1 has the same inverse, 1, 1. And then 2, negative 1 has an inverse of negative 1, 2. So how would you know if your graphs show the correct graphs of the inverse functions? This is how you know. Your graphs must reflect each other along the y equals x line. So what does that mean and where is the y equals x line? So this is your y equals x line and just once again to emphasize that your points are actually reflecting each other, let's take a look. This point is reflected through here. This point is reflected through here. Those are the inverses. This point is reflected through here. This is on the line itself. This point is reflected through here. So there you go, guys. I hope that you have learned a lot today on inverses. And I will see you next time.